Howdy y'all. So today we're going to tackle a custom sneaker. This is something I've been wanting to do for a while, a little bit different than the character artwork I do. Once again, disclaimer, this is gonna be a quick general overview of my workflow rather than a detailed step-by-step -step tutorial, if you're not familiar with these. Basically what I've done here is I started with a sphere, used the move tool to push and pull things around, get the overall shape. Next, I start by using the clay buildup tool and the sharp brush to kind of block in my features. At this point, I'm really just designing the shoe still. So uh, you see I've loaded in a reference image that I put together in Procreate for this, which has a bunch of different shoes that I like the style, some things I wanted to try here. And uh, I'm using the sharp brush clay buildup tool to kind of just sketch and create some ideas. For that sole, if you missed it, what I did is I masked things off and I just switched to the move tool and moved it down to get a thicker sole in the bottom. And now you can see really here's where I get into kind of the, the main way this whole process is going to work. Now that I have the features laid out the way I like, I simply mask them off and extract them one by one into a layer. So I've done that here with the sole already, with the heel, and now just the different parts of the shoe. Sometimes when I extract, the geometry is too thin. So I have to go in with the clay buildup tool in the back half and build it back up. Make sure if you do that, you turn off, uh, or sorry, you turn on front facing vertex only. So that way the clay buildup tool doesn't affect the opposite side of the geo. So here's just a matter of going through and picking out those parts. Now, one of the things I just did here is just to clean up the edges. Sometimes I'll switch to orthographic mode, uh, orthographic view in our camera and use the trim tool to cut away. And you get much sharper, cleaner edges that way. As sometimes I just use the flat tool to go around the edges to kind of get the look I want. Um, really, again, trim tool is probably the best. It's just sometimes the angles aren't always perfect for getting a, a nice, clean trim tool angle. One thing I discovered when you do this is if you voxel remesh, there is now a little uh, tick mark that you can check to, to preserve sharp edges. So be sure and do that, especially if you use the trim tool and those trims will stay looking nice, crisp and clean, no matter how many times you voxel remesh. I'm also filling each section with a color. This isn't going to be the end result color. Rather, this is just to distinguish the parts that I've already worked on versus the shoe, uh, the main shoe piece that I'm working from. And sometimes after I've extracted a part of the shoe, I'll use the flatten brush or move tool to kind of move the geometry in away from the extracted mesh. I'm keeping the tongue and kind of the part that goes under the laces all as one piece here. Just moving to moving stuff around. Really, you know, and if I were using something like Blender or ZBrush, what I would do is I would do a similar method here. And then before I get to Final Geo, I would go in and retopo. Because we're doing retop retopology gives you nice, really crisp, clean uh, geometry. Uh, and it's a little bit harder to do in more of an organic sculpting app like Nomad. But another way to look at it is at the end of the day, a sneaker is an organic form. It's not a CG form. And, uh, you know, it naturally has some lumps and uh, imperfect edges, if you will, just because it's an organic form. So to some degree, if you leave in those, those slight ripples and imperfections, you will get a more organic and realistic look. It's just kind of inherent in doing that. So, you know, don't show, shy away from uh, having some of those imperfections in your geometry. It actually kind of adds to the end result and the personality and character of the model. Using the flatten tool really helps give you nice clean geometry. And there's some new settings of the flatten tool that are worth playing around with. Honestly, I like the default settings. I really have grown accustomed to how it works. To add the shoe grommets, I just created a torus and used the clone button on the left there. Just hit clone and just duplicate it up the shoe. So here I'm adding laces. This is tedious. What I did is I used the tube tool and to keep the laces rather flat, you can actually scale using the gizmo on the right, uh, scale it in to make it flat, 
and do that before you move the curve points around. Just a little tip, and that allows you to have flat tubes. I do hope someday, uh, maybe Nomad will add in the ability to have maybe custom profiles or something for the tubes. I think that would be a really powerful feature. It's something that you find in Blender and other packages. Then I'm going in with the clay buildup tool and uh, kind of using subtract to kind of flatten those swarms a little bit more and again, keep them kind of nice and, and organic and kind of fabric looking. All right, so I wanted to add some wings to this. I really love the wing, uh, wing shoes that I have there in my reference. And I've always liked kind of the idea of these winged kind of Hermes uh, shoes, you know, Hermes from Greek mythology that had the winged messenger shoes. Uh, growing up, I had a buddy who had a beanie with wings on it. I always thought that was such a fun looking design. So kind of calling back to that. All right, and then that made me want to continue kind of those wing feather shapes through on these side stripes. So I do that here. Uh, here I'm using the sharp brush to create kind of a canal uh, around the sole. Continuing to kind of refine forms. Uh, here I'm creating the laces. For what it's worth, at the end of the shoe, I actually went back and redid the laces. Uh, the reason being is here what I did is I used the sharp brush to create kind of a crease around where those laces are and then use the clay's buildup tool to create each lace. But once I painted it, I wanted those parts white. So what I ended up doing is removing those laces and doing it again the same way. But when I used the clay uh, buildup tool to make the laces, I turned on the material option. So it will paint a rough white material as it goes. And you'll see me, uh, you'll see kind of what the end result is here. All right, here I wanted to create a custom texture. I created this in Procreate, just a black and white texture. And I used it with the stamp tool to create this kind of raised logo. It didn't come in nice and smooth, but that's fine. I just went in and cleaned it up with the sharp brush and flatten tool. So here you see me polishing that. For what it's worth, the FR stands for Flying Rabbit. I have an Etsy store called Flying Rabbit Studios where I sell um, toys that I create. So this is, uh, also plays into the theme of the wings. It goes right alongside that. And I'll do that same FR on the, the back tongue object. Right now I'm using the crease tool. Crease tool acts different than my sharp brush that I've built. It creates more of a kind of a pillowing look around the edges of the sharp brush. The sharp brush I feel like works more like the Damien standard. And again, that's one that I built. You can find it in my YouTube. Um, but it really all it is is just the brush with a really sharp fall off. Here I'm using the sharp brush to create little holes in the shoe. I had to go in and turn off the lazy mouse settings uh, in my sharp brush to get those holes. Because with lazy mouse, sometimes that stroke doesn't start as soon as you start dragging the pen. And so if you just pull all the lazy mouse off, you can get it to where you can kind of indent those holes really easily. Continue going around with the sharp brush and the flatten tool, move tool, just kind of polishing everything up. I'm getting pretty close to my final forms, really liking it. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna actually combine a lot of the, the geometry for the feet so I can use the move tool and I can reshape it uh, accordingly into a, uh, a right shoe. So, you know, that causes the big toe to kind of pull out forward and I push in on the inner arch of the arch of the foot here. So I, everything I had from up to this point was all using mirror tool. And I wanted to take that as far as I could get to get all those forms in. But once those forms are in, I had to take off the, the symmetry. And sorry, not using the mirror tool, but using symmetry, all my tools. Um, anyways, take that as far as I can. And then I combine just using a simple merge, not a voxel merge. So I can use that move tool with all of them. Adding a plane here for the floor. Um, the thing is, is once you simple merge it, I could I eventually get them back to individual meshes by just then hitting separate. So simple merge is a great way to just kind of temporarily get things in, use the move tool and then you can separate them. And I can still use the symmetry on my tools on the parts that are still symmetrical, like towards the back of the foot. 
Here I'm adding those outer laces that aren't laced up. Again, I'm using the gizmo scale, not only to make it flat along the Y axis, but along the Z axis as well. And it's not perfect that way, but it sure looks pretty good. I was happy with the way it turned out. And you wanna get those, you know, scaling those things in before you start messing with the actual curve points. And I'll put a, just a cylinder, or actually I think I'll use just a real, just a tube for the ends of those laces. All right, so here I started playing around with some ideas for how to get the tread on the shoe. So one of the things I did is I masked it off, pulled it out, get that in there. I, I'm actually kind of building up the, the sole of the shoe more. And what I end up doing is using the trim tool to, to create the shapes in those treads. Uh, here I'm reshaping the sole a little bit. So I get this kind of extended part here, and here I'm making the upper part of the sole a little bit more interesting. Oh, I guess I haven't done the treads here. <laughs> I come back and do those here in just a second. Also, I'm using the clay buildup tool with uh, one of the default scratch brushes to kind of add some kind of leather uh, texture to it. All right, so here's where I tried doing the treads. I tried first just using a mask and then just moving that around, but Honestly, I wasn't too happy. Everything came out a little um, pixelated looking. So what I decided was gonna work better is just uh, creating a, a, a section that I mask off, extrude, or I extract it, sorry, pull it out, and then I use the trim, trim tool to clean it up. You can see it gives me really nice, crisp uh, geometry around there. I only created the tread around the, the toe because it's really the only part of the shoe we're gonna see the tread on uh, for my final renders. I could have gone and done it throughout. Um, I can always go back and add that in if I want. Um, always trying to label everything well. So now I'm going in and actually playing with the final colors. Um, I ended up going with sort of a red and gold look. Uh, you know, it's somewhere between red and gold and McDonald's, I think. <laughs> um, I got some white kind of fades on there. It would be fun to eventually pull this into Procreate and get some interesting kind of designer patterns in the in each section. But for this, I wanted to just see how far I could take it in Nomad and get some really nice renders in Nomad. Here I'm creating some masked areas that I then will push into the model just to create some more interest in that sole. Just kind of break up those forms where there was a lot of just kind of blank space. Here I've turned on the post-processing and added, I'm adding some lights, getting those dialed in. Painted black where the holes are on the shoes. With those black, I, I also uh, paint the roughness all the way up, so there's no specularity in those sections either. Again, just painting some nice little patterns here and there. I've got basically a three-point lighting set up here. Here I'm masking off the sections again and doing kind of a faded, uh, kind of an airbrush blue in there, so they kind of have this, it's like a walking on clouds looking design here. Fits into the theme. And those sections that come up over the top of the wings kind of point forward, those I have uh, the roughness pulled down on those. So they're, I'm thinking those are kind of a glossy plastic or rubber rather. All right, so to make the other shoe, what I did is I actually saved a copy of the file and duplicated it and then I trimmed off the, the top of the tongue and the back tongue and flipped those. Then I merged everything together and flipped it again. I also uh, did a uh, decimation just so it wasn't too heavy on my iPad. I saved that off and then I added into my original scene. So again, duplicated the scene, trimmed out what was unnecessary, flipped the tongues, then flip, uh, decimated and flipped the whole object added it back into the scene and voila, I've got two shoes. Uh, the laces were a little similar. What I ended up doing is I actually did this process again a couple of times because I went through and tweaked kind of the stitching on my shoes and I also ended up uh, mirroring the laces. So uh, even those, those laces, you can see they look the exact same, the ones that are unlaced. Uh, what I eventually do is I flip the two um, and you'll see that eventually. Also, I decided it would look better to have more of an asphalt sort of texture. So I used the clay buildup tool with some texture on it um, to kind of make everything rough on the ground. And then I painted in uh, 
a flat, uh, really reflective uh, area near the shoe. So it kind of creates these puddles and you can see as it turns around here. So this is the final turnaround of the model. Uh, really happy with the way I was able to get the lighting in here. Um, I've also got some stills I'll show you here in a second that were rendered from Nomad. And then I went ahead and spent another 30 minutes I'm not showing you here in Blender to, to get these same textures and look in Blender. Um, I also kind of really played up the asphalt texture and did a few things there. But honestly, the Nomad renders really, really stinking good. It's just missing some of the subsurface that I like on the, the rubber parts and stuff. So these are my custom sneakers in Nomad, all sculpted 100% Nomad. And here are some stills from Nomad. And finally, I'll leave you with the still from Blender. Really happy with the way this process turned out. Uh, if I get time, I might take this model into Procreate and again, give it some more designer textures and really play with what I can do there. Um, but yeah, that's it. If you guys have any questions, feel free to comment below. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Hopeful, hopefully it was helpful. Would love to see it if you guys take on a similar challenge. Uh, in the meantime, like, comment, subscribe, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks.